ready to get serious about building content sites and building a profitable business online? Welcome to the Niche Website Builders Podcast. We bring you the latest field-tested tips, tricks, and strategies for building a profitable online asset. We interview industry experts, share customer success stories, and reveal our own experiences working on hundreds of sites to inspire and motivate you to make something happen. Let's do this. Welcome to the Niche Website Builders podcast. Today we have Jake Thomas. Now, Jake makes full-time living from two websites. One is his pet website and the other is, I guess you could say it's a YouTube niche website called Creator Hooks. And we start diving a little bit into his pet website, but then we spend the majority of the podcast talking YouTube. And what Jake has done is he specialized in breaking down what successful titles look like. And we go pretty deep into various formulas, um, words, and I guess uh, title formulas that he's seen that's worked really well. Um, you can also use these titles not just for YouTube, but you can use them for your email newsletters. You can even use them on Twitter. And we just go down that rabbit hole of YouTube. We also talk about thumbnails, um, retention within the videos as well. And I know a lot of people might be looking to get into video coming in 2023, especially with the rise and obsession with AI content um, potentially taking over the SERPs for for easily regurgitated keywords and video is one way you could look to potentially diversify yourself outside of that as well continuing to build your brand so sit back and enjoy this episode is brought to you by niche website builders an agency dedicated to helping people just like you build profitable content sites niche website builders are the hands-off content site marketing agency you always wished existed it's run by content site marketers for content site marketers, and they help both investors and individuals alike build profitable online properties. They provide a fully outsourced approach to content creation, link building, and done-for-you website builds, the same approach they use on their own six-figure portfolios. For example, their content packages come with a proprietary keyword research process, are written by in-house native English speakers, formatted using templates proven to convert, and uploaded to WordPress with affiliate links added so that all you need to do is hit the publish button. Check them out at nichewebsite.builders show. That's nichewebsite.builders show and fill out the form to get coupon codes for 10% more content or a 10% discount on links with your first order sent right to your inbox. All right, welcome to the Niche Website Builders podcast. Today we have Jake Thomas. Welcome, Jake. Thanks for having me, James. I'm excited. No, thanks for coming on. It's, it's going to be a good podcast because not only will we touch on the Niche Website stuff, we're going to touch on YouTube stuff which is good timing for myself. I'm looking to revive or revamp my YouTube channel because right now it's just podcasts on there. And I used to have informational video, but it was a pain in the ass to do. So I was like, I'll just get guests and then other people can basically be the content. <laughs> but I'm going to I'm gonna revamp it. So we'll dive into that, I'm, sh I'm sure, later in the podcast. But let's start. let's start with your background, maybe what you're doing, what you're doing to make money online, and then we'll dive into your niche site. Yeah. So, um, b uh, before I was kind of like a, just marketing manager. Um, you know, I've worked in Facebook ads as media buyer, um, YouTube channel manager, kind of blog manager. Um, it's kind of all across the board. And, uh, I finally quit my job about a year and a half ago, um, to go full time on the dog blog and also on the YouTube stuff. So right now, uh, half my money is coming from the, the blog and I also have like a, a dog YouTube channel to go along with it. Um, and you know, we can talk about splits there. Uh, and then, um, also my newsletter about how to write better YouTube titles. Nice. The, the dog website, how niche down is that dog website? Uh, it's about a single breed. Okay. Yeah. That yeah, makes so sense. Pretty niche. Oh. <laughs> I have, that was, that was a big, uh, I took like two or three weeks to like decide what I was going to do. I was considering going like puppies in general or yeah. just, uh, just like one breed, um, and I just decided on the one breed in the end. What, what made you decide on that breed? Cause I'm, I know there's a lot of pet sites out there. It's almost like the <laughs> first, it's almost like the first niche that anyone goes into as a, as a pet site. So how did you decide on the breed? Um, I mean, it's, it's the dog I have, so it's a golden retriever. I've got a golden okay, retriever. Perfect. Um, so it's like, all right, well I can make content about a golden retriever. Um, 
and it's just easier. So I didn't want to be writing about um, kind of just like hedging on everything. So like, you know, if you're trying to train your dog, if you have a big dog, you know, it might be this. Or like if you have a, you know, a, a small breed dog, it might be this. Or, you know, this type of breed. So just focusing on one breed was a lot easier. Um, also, as far as like products go, um, I've kind of, I did a little bit of like affiliate marketing with, um, with, uh, with like some dog, uh, dog training courses. And the first mm. thing everybody asks is like, is this good for my breed? You know, will this work for my breed? So it's yeah. like, all right, well, I don't want to deal with that crap. Like I'm only going to focus <laughs> on one breed. Um, so you don't need to ask like the biggest question. So right, right away solving like, you know, the, the biggest objection that people have, um, you know, that, uh, that's, that's not an issue anymore. So that, that helped me focus on just the one. Nice. Do you want to break down maybe how old the site is, number of posts, traffic per month, and kind of the, I guess the monetization split, where that money's coming from within the site? Yeah. So I started in March, 2020, 2019. Um, and I have like 170 blog posts on there, I think. Um, mm -hmm. So a ton, a ton more opportunity, I think, um, making uh, about 10,000 or so a month, um, uh, maybe 3,000 from YouTube, um, the other 7,000, uh, you know, six or seven and three to four from YouTube, six to seven from the blog. Um, and that split is uh, like 50% ads, 40% uh, affiliates and 10% my own uh, products. Damn, that's awesome. That's 7,000 a month from 170 posts on a dog blog. I haven't heard a ratio like that before. So it's, let's let's dive a little deeper. How, I guess how are you... I guess, I guess the question is there, what is it that you're targeting within that blog to bring in that kind of revenue? Because in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, dog blog, you're going to maybe be like, as you mentioned, how to train your dog, there might be a course, but then you've got um, other dog questions. Can they eat this? Can they eat that? Which generally a higher volume, but mm -hmm. with 170 posts, you're bringing a lot of ad revenue too, and a lot of affiliate revenue. So I guess what was your process building that? Yeah. Um, I mean, just so with like, you know, so I'm only talking about golden retrievers. So like, I don't have, um, uh, it, it, I don't really have like a filter on, Oh, should I write this post or not? Like, I'm, you know, I'm pretty limited. You know, I can't be talking about, there's not a billion possible keywords out there for me. Um, so I'm just taking down everything. Um, now I'm trying to rank for things like, you know, best leash for golden retriever, best dog bed, best collar, stuff like that. Um, that has worked. Um, and then also, uh, you know, trying to, um, I'm just, like I, you know, I talk, I have a, so a, a dog trainer writes for me and, uh, mm -hmm. so she talks about like some, you know, I went the I went the high quality, uh, low quantity route. Yeah. Um. You know, and and I pay her a decent amount. Um. I think more than, like I've heard, you know, some you know, how much other people pay, and uh, and I'm paying like maybe like double that. Um. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm going for the going for the high quality. Um. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But uh. But yeah, and like you know, she'll she talks a lot about you know training methods and. Within all those training methods, um, you know, the blog posts are pretty long and also, you know, there's a lot of tools. So like we're, you know, I'm linking to Amazon and Chewy a lot, um, you know, so that's helping too. Um, so, you know, mostly just really just trying to like make the most helpful thing I can. Not, I mean, this is, you know, this is like half of my uh, business and I'm not even like super ex excited about it. Like I'm, I'm excited, but like I'm more excited about the YouTube stuff and I'm putting kind of more of my effort and focus on that. Um, you know, so I'm really just, I'm trying to play the long game here. Uh, I'm not trying to like squeeze every like little bit out of it. Um, and, uh, just trying to make helpful content that's going to be around, uh, for like 10 years. Nice. But before we go into that YouTube stuff, you mentioned you have your own products as well. What are your own products on there? I guess what, what led you to developing those specific ones? Yeah. So I just have, it's like a, like a, an ebook, like a, you know, a puppy raising ebook. Gotcha. Um, and it's like 10 bucks. And, uh, and that's, it's done. Okay. It hasn't like knocked it out of the park. Um, but it's done, it's done. Okay. Um, and that was, I did like a virtual summit when I first started in like 2019 or 20, I think it was in 2019. I did a virtual summit. Um, I talked to like some breeders, uh, dog trainers, veterinarians, and the, um, and the ebook is pretty much just like 
uh, you know, a written version of, uh, of all those, all those, uh, interviews. Oh, nice. That's a good way of repurposing a lot of that, uh, that content there into a book. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that it was like, uh, it was one of the, one of the better moves that I've made and I'm very, very thankful for it. <laughs> I can imagine. Uh, and you mentioned obviously within that revenue on your, on your dog site, you've branched out into YouTube, which makes you a fair bit of cash. Are you filming those YouTube videos yourself with your own dog? Um, a little bit. So I started like a kind of just like, so it's more educational. It's not so much entertainment. Um, you know, you know, it's like, you know, 10 things, uh, you know, golden troopers love to do or whatever, kind of you know, stuff like that. Um, so, uh, so I, I was like doing like talking head style and I hated it. Mm-hmm. Um, and also like, it, like it wasn't doing that well. And then, uh, I kind of came stumbled across like faceless videos. So just kind of like, you know, uh, just a bunch of clips of like dogs, you know, or, you know, any, anything really, uh, just thrown together, um, with, uh, kind of like a, a narrator, like a voiceover. And so I started doing that and it kind of makes a lot of sense. It's like, well, people would probably rather just like watch a uh you know see a bunch of clips of cute gold retrievers than like see my <laughs> my hairy face so uh so i mean that like looking back on it, it makes sense and i wish i did it earlier but when i when i pivoted to that so i have a, a video editor that i found on fiverr so he kind of i like i send him like audio and then he puts just mm-hmm. a bunch of clips of golden retrievers together from that and then for like specific things like if i'm talking about like Oh yeah. Like, you know, um, you know, one of the things that can help is like training your dog. So then I'll put in a clip, I'll go and after he edits a video, I'll put in a clip of me like training my dog or something like that. So it's a little bit of a hybrid. Okay. Okay. So essentially you're, you're almost narrating like an informational piece. Like for example, you might be repurposing a blog post on how to do whatever with the dog. You make the, you narrate the YouTube video and then he just basically puts the clips in of random, maybe random golden retrievers he finds on the internet. Yes, exactly. Yeah, okay. and it's uh yeah, it's 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 worked out pretty well. Um and uh yeah, I'm I'm very very happy that I did it. <laughs> no, that's awesome. I wanted to go down some of the YouTube route as well. Obviously, you've done a lot of analysis into YouTube titles. And I think anyone who's kind of dabbled in the world of YouTube, you have thumbnails and titles are kind of like your two big things for I guess you could say dictating the success of your channel other than the actual video. So do you want to maybe dive into the title itself? Do you have any formulas for writing it? How are you grading titles? All that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, and so it started as I was working for a fishing company and I was a channel manager there and we were publishing like a, a, a two videos every day. So we needed a ton of ideas. Wow. So we had a couple fishing coaches. I was like, you know, they were doing the fun stuff. They were going out and fishing and like recording their, uh, like recording their trips and then like making, uh, it's like, you know, kind of tip videos. And then I was the one putting that on the internet, you know, putting it on our blog, sending it to our email list and putting it on the YouTube channel. So it was my job to come up with all these ideas. And what I did was just, um, you know, I was looking at like, I was looking outside of our niche. Like I was, so I was looking at like what other kind of, uh, educational channels doing like, you know, finance and like fitness. So, you know, it might be like, you know, uh, you know, 10 best exercise to get bigger biceps. So then I would be like, all right, well, how can we use that for fishing? Well, uh, you know, 10 best lures to catch bass, something like that. Um, mm. so I, so I was doing that internally for us and I was like, well, this is working really well for us. I bet that it would work for other people. Um, so I sent out like a hundred, like cold emails, like, Hey, you know, I'm thinking about putting this, um, you know, this newsletter together with like all these ideas. Uh, you know, what, what do you, what do you think about that? And you know, a couple of people, it was like 10 or 15 people got back to me. It was like, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. So I started the newsletter doing that and just sending out, you know, five ideas every week, you know, why they work and then how I would use them for other channels. Um, and just, uh, you know, that kind of, kind of snowballed from, uh, you know, just like, you know, 10, 10 people who signed up at first to, um, to now it's growing. It's, uh, it's pretty big and, or it's decently big. It's, it's a lot bigger than 10. Um, so, and that's just kind of like forced me to, uh, intentionally study what makes people click. And then I've taken that and I've applied that for, um, 
for email subject lines and like blog posts, uh, you mm-hmm. know, blog titles, even like subheadings and like how I open up my intros. So it's really just like studying the psychology of what makes people click. Like, you know, I'm applying it to YouTube channels, but you know, this is a, a skill that, you know, I've always, the reason that I started a newsletter was because I didn't want to only focus on my blog because depending on how yeah. you, uh, Google is feeling, you know, my income can be like <laughs> up 50% or it can be down 50%. So I didn't, I didn't like the roller coaster and just like, you know, just relying on Google. And, um, typically newsletters are a little bit less volatile. Um, you know, I'm sure, you know, one of these days, Apple or Gmail might come out with some crazy update and all of us newsletter uh, writers are going to be screwed, <laughs> but, uh, but that hasn't happened in a long time. So, so hopefully I'll be okay. But, um, but, uh, so yeah, so I wanted, I wanted to be kind of like anti-algorithm and even like taking that a step deeper, I wanted to have a skill that will last forever. So, you know, my current job, a large part of my job was running Facebook ads and Facebook ads are always changing. Um, and you know, just like the algorithm is changing and, uh, and ads manager is changing and you know, all this crazy stuff like iOS 14 or 15 or whatever it was. Mm. So you know, I wanted a, a forever skill and like human psychology, like the psychology of what makes people click. Um, that's what kind of drew me to YouTube titles. So, and you know, and then this, this psychology has been working for, um, you know, for everything. So like, you know, an example, um, an email subject line. So I was doing a series on like two month old golden retrievers, three month old golden retrievers, four month old golden retrievers. And, um, you know, my, my click through rate and my open rate slowly started going down, you know, because if you have a two month old golden retriever, like everybody's kind of freaking out, like, Oh crap, I got a new puppy. They're crazy. I'm in pain. Like I need help. Um, so people are really excited about that. <laughs> but then like, if you have like a four month old golden, it's kind of like, all right, cool. Like I've had them for two months. We're in a routine. Um, you know, I don't have a a new puppy anymore. So it's just, it's not as big of a pain point. So I was seeing my, my click through rate, uh, kind of plummet there. So then for the five month old golden retriever post, instead of just saying like, you know, five month old golden retrievers, uh, which would be a good search, um, you know, like a a good title for a blog post, I use the title, uh, why teenage golden retrievers are the worst. Um, and that like Mm. my click through rate went from like 4% Mm. to like 8%. Um, you know, because it was a, it was a better title. It was kind of like speaking to a pain point, it had a lot of negativity. Um, and Mm. you know, people, people love negativity. So, you know, that was one way that I used, you know, the psychology, um, you know, for that I've been learning with uh, YouTube titles for email subject lines. So, and, and doubling the, the CTR, uh, made it, made a big difference for that post. Um, so you know, so, so that was, that was, that was cool. And just to see that, all right, you know, this stuff is working no matter, no matter where or what platform you're on, you know, the same general principles, uh, work to kind of get people's attention and make them click. Is there a time and place or <clears throat> I don't know, maybe some kind of rule of thumb where you would use a positive versus a negative headline? Yeah. So, I mean, one, it depends, uh, at least in in my opinion or my experience, it depends on where this, uh, content is. So, uh, most like, I think it's like 70% of the views on YouTube come from, uh, like, you know, just, uh, discovery channels. So like, um, you know, browse and uh, suggested and, you know, only like 30% Mm. come from search. Mm. And I, some smart person was telling me like you, uh, Google doesn't really like negativity. Um, you know, they prefer uh, neutrality or like, you know, a slight, um, kind of like positive angle. So, uh, so, you know, if I'm writing to rank and search, I usually will not go with a negative, um, title, but if I'm trying to grab someone's attention, like on the YouTube homepage or in their email inbox, where I'm competing with a bunch of other content, then, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll use negativity if it makes sense. Hmm. Okay, that makes sense. Do, do you want to maybe dive into some title or headline formulas that you've found most effective? Maybe let's just start with, with YouTube titles themselves. And then obviously, I think a lot of those can translate, as you mentioned, to the email list anyway. But maybe just start there with, with formulas that you've found that worked well. Yeah, so, I mean, one, like the, the first one that comes to mind is like kind of the truth about. 
Um, you know, so like, you know, the truth about podcasting mm -hmm. or the truth about uh, SEO. Recently, I've been seeing like some sort of negative word in front of uh, truth. So like the ugly truth, uh, the weird truth, the scary mm -hmm. truth. Um, and I, so I've seen that. I've seen that work a lot recently. Um, you know, some like power words. I've seen regret uh, work a lot. You know, just because like our culture is kind of like mm. obsessed with regrets. Um, so, for instance, like, you know, like if someone's on their deathbed, most people are going to be like, um, you know, hey, like, what, you know, what's your biggest regret? Like, we just we always want to we just love regrets. Um, so so, you know, talking about, you know, um, you know, tools that you regret buying or, you know, my biggest regret in doing this, um, you know, that has worked well. I've also like I've seen change work a lot. Um, and like particularly change my life. So I did a, a project recently mm. where I, I did 103 YouTube title AB tests and it was for a oh, one, wow. yeah, uh, one test was for a golf channel and, um, the, the title that I, I was testing was like, you know, uh, this, uh, you know, this golf swing tip changed my life versus this golf swing tip changed my game. And I would mm. think that like change, change my life is like pretty dramatic. Like we're, we're talking about golf, here, right? <laughs> uh, but change my life actually worked a lot, worked a lot better than, uh, you know, change my game. Uh, and I thought that was interesting. Um, and then also like, like forever, like, you know, change my life forever, changed, um, uh, you know, this, you know, it, it cha like change my life forever. Just, uh, I've seen that work a lot and I, I think it does sound a little dramatic, um, but uh, yeah, I mean, people people really liked it. I'm, I'm writing some of these down at the moment just so I can keep them there for for future titles. <laughs> but the the difference between doing the title and doing the thumbnail then. So if you created a title, the truth about or this or the golf this golf tip changed my life forever. What goes on the thumbnail? Yeah. So so I originally started only like kind of thinking about titles and like, you know, there are a couple like mistakes and stuff with titles, but what I started to, th to kind of realize was I was really kind of learning more about what makes a good idea. Um, so, you know, so things about like regrets and you know, changing my life, that's a, that's a good idea. And then for the thumbnail, I'm definitely not the best at thumbnails, but I'm getting better. Um, but, uh, you know, just really thinking about how can I make a visual representation of the good idea? So, okay. so that might be like, you know, like a before and after. So like, um, like, you know, this, uh, you know, the, this weird eating habit changed, uh, you know, changed my life. So you might have a before and after it was like, oh, I'm fat, but now I'm skinny. Uh, or like, you know, I'm mm. skinny, but now I'm jacked. Um, you know, like this weird lifting habit or something, uh, habit was another, yeah another popular, um, you know, kind of like power word, another popular term that I've seen a lot. Um, so, so really, yeah, thinking about like, what's the best way to, to, uh, you know, to, to show or visually represent, uh, what, what I'm trying to show you or like, um, you know, another, another word that I've seen do well is like stop. So that's often like, uh, you know, stop doing like kind of a best practice or like something mm, that I've used uh, that one. Yeah. Yeah. Did it work well for you? <laughs> I have to go back and check. That's an old, old video. I've actually used it on some of my blog posts too. And it's, yeah, I mean, they rank, they rank up top three, depending nice. on what it is. So nice. it seems yeah. to be all right. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And it's usually, um, so, you know, counter, being counterintuitive is like a great way to build curiosity. So, mm. so I saw a golf uh, or a, it was a tennis video the other day. And it was stop standing here in doubles. So I would have, mm. so I, I just, I watched the intro. I, I don't know much about tennis, but from what I understand, it's like everybody uh, thinks that this is like the best way, the best place to stand. So it's all right, here's a common practice, but this guy is saying, stop doing this. Um, yeah. Another one on YouTube is like, stop, uh, you know, why I stopped asking people to subscribe. And it's like, well, that doesn't make sense. Like everybody says you should, you know, ask people to subscribe. Um, you know, why, why would you not do that? So of course, like you've got to click, <laughs> um, you know, that's got like negativity and curiosity there. 
um, you know, just because it doesn't make sense. So, um, you know, stopping telling people to do that. So in this, uh, for the tennis video, like, you know, stop standing here in doubles. Um, the thumbnail was like, you know, someone standing there, like, you know, where you're saying stop with like a big circle around them. So, mm. you know, so people, and like, I think it said like, stop or, you know, stop doing this or something on the thumbnail too. So people might see like, okay, cool. I'm standing there and then stop. Wait a minute. That like, that doesn't make sense. It's not that not what I was expecting there. Um, so just really think about how do you visually represent uh, the idea um, in your thumbnail, um, and then also just like as far as text goes, you know, all the same things apply for like titles and text, or sorry, titles and thumbnails. Just like when we're talking about words, um, so like you know, negativity and like curiosity and um, and desire, and like also like you know, so like opening up a loop, like don't do this. Or, you know, stop standing here, stuff like that. Um, you know, so those, uh, the, like the same kind of uh, uh, trends have worked well in, in thumbnail text there too. Can you overcrowd that that thumbnail, yes. especially with words? Because you see a lot yes. of, most thumbnails either have no text or maybe one word or three words like you mentioned there. But obviously there's, there's a rule of thumb not to put big title sentences in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean... Yeah. Yeah. You can definitely over, uh, overcrowd them and, you know, simpler is better. Uh, people are just like scrolling quickly. And if you have a, a long title or like a complex title, um, or, I mean, even like, you know, this is going off on a little bit of a tangent, but even if you don't have like a crystal clear title, right? Like people are, are scanning quickly. They need to instantly understand exactly what this video is about. That's why like, you know, sarcasm doesn't work well in titles um, trying to be like, just like too clever, you know, so like, yeah. you know, clarity beats cleverness all the time. Um, so, uh, and you know, it's kind of the same with like, you know, clarity is, you know, is best in thumbnails, like have crystal clear thumbnails, make it very obvious what, um, you know, what your, what your, what is in your thumbnail and what your video is about three to, f you know, I don't know, three ish words, two to five. Um, you know, some people, I don't I, personally, like, I don't have a real, like, hard rule. And I've seen a lot of, um, a lot of videos be successful with, you know, sometimes like more text than they should. Um, but, uh, but I usually aim for three or so words, mm. um, and try to like use big words and big faces and like nothing else. <laughs> gotcha. I guess the question becomes from this as well. Most people are making their thumbnails from Canva templates. So you see a lot of the same templates throughout YouTube. Have you noticed any negative effects from, I guess, using some of those templates that are often used? Um, so I guess like the, the first thought that comes into my mind is like Lewis Howe's um, uh, YouTube channel where, and, and a lot of these same uh, kind of like just informational or podcast channels they use the same template. It's like a big face on like on one side mm -hmm. and you know, like a couple words on the other side. And I feel like the better, um, the better YouTube channels just do it better. Um, even though like, you know, a big YouTube channel and a small YouTube channel are, they're doing the same template. Um, you know, the bigger YouTube channels are often, they have more punchier words that like build more emotion in them. Um, mm -hmm. and it's like, it's a, bigger face. And like, it's also more like a clearer thumbnail, um, where there's not a lot, you know, overcrowding it. Like you said, you know, there's not like, you know, a person's face and then the text and then a graph and then, uh, you know, like a trophy yeah. and then like a stack of money <laughs> and like all this crap. Like, uh, there's, I, I've, uh, there, there's something called like the three element rule where like, you know, the best, uh, thumbnails have like only three elements. Mm, so okay. just keeping, keeping things simple. Um, but yeah, I don't think that following like a, a template, uh, you know, is, is bad, but, but you just need to execute it well. What are you doing with your thumbnails then? Since you obviously mentioned it like a big face, but your videos are faceless. So yeah. what are you doing? Yeah. So I'm trying to visually represent what the video is about. Um, and this is something like I've, I've historically been like pretty bad at thumbnails. And, uh, this is something that I'm actively trying to get better. And, um, 
so I'm trying to think about like, all right, are we talking about like, you know, golden retriever, like behavior problems. So maybe it's like a before and after of like, you know, a golden retriever, like, you know, growling and then like a smiling golden retriever or, um, you know, maybe like, you know, a golden retriever who's all muddy and then a clean golden, or even just like, you know, a picture of like someone like, you know, petting a golden and being like, don't do this. You know, if it's like, you know, mm. 10 things you should never do with your golden retriever, um, you know, it's kind of like the, um, you know, the, the stop standing here, uh, with the tennis example, yeah. you, know, you know, stop. And then like, you know, showing the, you know, what everybody is doing. So it's like, you know, or maybe it's like, um, I don't know, just, you know, you know, petting your dog or like, you know, handing your dog food and you know, don't feed them this, something like that. I'm just really just trying to think, you know, how do I build curiosity, you know, either show like before and after, or like, you know, something like popular that people are doing that they shouldn't be doing. Um, and like, you know, maybe with like an, like an arrow and like, don't do this or stop. Um, and then also, um, just show showing like, you know, the, the middle of action, like right before something is about to happen. Mm. Um, and that's, I don't know. So those, those are kind of like my, my three little go-tos right now. Um, definitely, definitely not the, the best at that, but, um, but I'm, I'm working on it. And those, those are my three right now. Awesome. I know you have a, a ranking guideline for ranking titles, which you've called your, it's like your creator hook score. Do you want to maybe run yes. through how you've done that? Yeah. So the hook score came because when I was trying to evaluate how well a video did, you could look at like a, uh, you know, a channel that has a million subscribers and they had a hundred thousand views, but they get a hundred thousand views on all their videos. So it's like, well, like, cool. Like this is kind of a good title, but, but it's just average for this channel mm. where maybe another channel, um, maybe they average like 10,000 views a video, but all of a sudden one of these videos got a hundred thousand views. So where with the first channel, like that's average, the second channel, that's 10 times better than what their average is. So there's, there's something there. Um, so that's the hook score is just like, um, it, it kind of, it counts up like kind of an average of like the last 10 videos, um, for this channel. And then how well a, an outlier video did compared to that average. Mm. Um, so, so in the, in the case of like where, you know, the channel averages 10,000 views, but, uh, but one got a hundred thousand, that's 10 times more. So like in my case, the hook score would be a thousand. Um, you okay. know, if it got three times more, the hook score would be 300. Um, and that just, so like my whole thing with creator hooks is just studying outliers. Um, and so the hook score lets me kind of, uh, you know, define outliers very concretely. Um, and then what I've done is I put them all in a database and all of like the, all the things that I'm trying to you know, learn about YouTube titles are based on, you know, all of these outliers. Ah, right, Gotcha. Gotcha. I actually wanted to dive a little more as well into the actual video, I guess, editing and creation. I know, I know titles and things are, are kind of like your expertise at the moment with, with creator hooks, but I still wanted to dive into this area because you're obviously doing it yourself now with your own YouTube channel, but what things are you doing to hold the engagement of a viewer? Because I know people always talk about, Hey, you should make lots of cuts and edits and the camera should always be moving, et cetera, et cetera. So is there anything that you're doing or that you've found that has worked? Uh, yeah. I mean, a little bit, um, right now I'm trying to take things one at a time. So I feel like I've kind I feel like I'm, my strength is titles. And now I'm working on mastering thumbnails and I'm also kind of working on mastering intros. So I honestly like mm. haven't even really gotten to like, uh, you know, to like the meat of the video, but I'm really just trying to personally, I'm trying to get to like, um, you know, 80% retention in the first 30 seconds. I'm usually at like 75. Um, but I'm trying to get to 80 on, on average. I'm, I'm averaging between 70 to 75 and I'm trying to stick that at 80. Um, so, so th that's like the only thing I've been thinking about. And I've just been watching a lot of, uh, a lot of successful channels and taking notes and trying to see like if they're the videos that do well for them. How do they, what do their first 30 seconds look like? Mm -hmm. Um, so, th so that's just what I've been thinking, you know, thinking about and something that I, um, 
kind of I found that was a little surprising is that not many of them open up with a question. So I I come from like you know direct response marketing uh, background in like direct response advertising. So it's always like, Hey, are you struggling with your hair loss? You know, try this yeah. hair thing. Uh, so it like, just like the classic, um, you know, the classic, like, Hey, are you struggling with this pain point? Um, but I've just found that a lot of people make bold statements in their intros and then they kind of go from there. Um, so that's just something I've been thinking about and, and, and working on. But, uh, as far as like, you know, kind of holding people's um, you know, retention throughout or attention throughout the video. I've worked on like adding like a couple little jokes, um, you know, just cause I'm, I tend to like my default is very uh, kind of straightforward and like boring. Um, <laughs> so like, just like, Hey, here's the information. And I'm like, all right, well this like, it's not working well. Um, so, so I'm trying to, I'm trying to add in a, c- a couple more jokes um you know, and trying to, uh, you know, just trying to, to be a little bit more interesting. Uh, also limiting my, uh, calls to action, I'm trying to do that. Mm, okay. Um, you know, because a lot of people like, you know, Hey, subscribe, download my thing. Uh, give me a like, give me a comment. Um, you know, share with a friend. So I'm trying to limit them just because I know typically if, you know, if I ask them, you know, if I ask my audience to do, uh, two things, they're more likely to do them than if I ask, you know, at least do at least one of those two things. Then if I ask them to do 10 things, they're going to be like, all right, yeah. well, you're just this whole. And like, that was when I was first learning YouTube, I, you know, I was kind of reading about like, Oh, the algorithm, you know, once, you know, comments and likes and subscribes and, and, you know, shares and all this crap. And I was just kind of like going through my video. I'm like, wow. Like I have like a, a call to action, like every, like, two minutes or like a minute and a half. Like I feel like this whole video is just like one big call to action. Like it kind of sucks. Um, and like, and my, my video kind of reflected that, like where my, my stats reflected that, like no one was watching my videos. Um, so, so yeah, limiting the, uh, limiting the calls to action to, uh, hopefully, um, you know, just like, you know, the kind of the, the bare minimum, but also like the most important, uh, throwing in some jokes, not exactly like, you know, making like a bunch of aggressive cuts, um, but just trying to trying to open more loops, um, you know, trying to build curiosity throughout the video. Um, and that's just something that like definitely does not come natural to me. Hmm. Um, well, that's a real that sto- storytelling skill, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I am. My friends will tell you I'm terrible at telling stories. Um, <laughs> so, so I've just been, you know, I got this from, uh, Patty Galloway's talk at vid summit last year, uh, or I guess, I don't know, this year, I don't know, th- like three months ago, um, was just like put like on YouTube, think about quality over quantity. Um, and before I was trying to stick to like a very strict schedule All right, every, every Sunday we're publishing a video. Um, mm. and I ended up kind of, and I also, I wanted to like scale up like, all right, let's, you know, uh, twice a week publishing a video, but I was just kind of like producing crap. Um, like video videos kind of sucked. Um, so, so I've been thinking a lot about, you know, how do I slow down? How do I add some jokes, you know, open some more loops, tell better stories. Um, and that's, that's slowed me down, but I've, I've, uh, I feel like I've been making some progress recently in these last few videos. Um, and just, just trying to think how can, um, how can I make, how can I make better videos and trying to challenge myself not to be impatient and just publish just because I need to publish. Yeah, that it's a real interesting topic that one because obviously every man and his dog when talking about YouTube is talking well, that's no pun intended there, but <laughs> is just talking about is talking about, hey, you need to publish regularly. You should publish same day, same time, every week. But then there's obviously a, a couple of channels that I've watched that talked about, you know, that doesn't really do anything, uh, I guess views, ranking, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. It doesn't really affect that at all and it's more to do with potentially you know how well your videos are doing i know matt giovanesi is doing his videos he does like one month one every two months or whatever it is that are super high quality so then you going down that same road has kind of made me think you know maybe maybe i don't need to try put myself into some fixed schedule that's going to be like oh shit i need to film something and then pub- edit it and publish it yeah i mean i been going back and forth on this, but, but I think that definitely like a schedule 
if you're if you're just you know, with anything like you need to get your reps in right so mm. you know if you are if someone is not uh you know they have not published videos on youtube before then uh then they mm. shouldn't they shouldn't publish one a month it's like oh cool like you're never going to learn like you're going to learn faster yeah. from your mistakes right. like there's that story of like you know, like the, the pottery class where, you know, some people, uh, you know, made a pot every day. And then some people took the, like the, you know, the whole, the whole month to make one pot. And like the people who made a crappy pot every day ended up making like a, you know, a prettier pot because they got more reps in. So definitely if you're getting started, I think you need to put the reps in because you're going to learn faster. But once, uh, you know, once you have a good understanding of like, all right, well, this, this works, this doesn't work. Then I think you can kind of slow down, uh, and then put what you know works, you know, put that, put that Mm. into practice. Um, but I think you need the reps at first and then, and then you, and then you slow down. I think at least that's how I'm thinking about it now. Yeah. That's good advice. It's kind of like the blogging route, right. That people take, you know, you, you got to start pumping out content, relatively quickly just because your first article is going to suck anyway so get through those and then as you get better at writing then you can maybe slow down and start doing more while research articles come back well on youtube you can't come back and and re-edit them but (laughs) you can refilm a similar topic yes yeah definitely um yeah and i've i've done that i've unpublished um a couple of videos um and just kind of and and remade a you know i tried to do it better um you know so I've, i've done that a little bit um but, uh, but yeah, I mean, yeah, you definitely, you definitely need to get the reps in, but, uh, once you get them quality, uh, I, th- I think matters a little bit more later. You, you talked about the intros about asking questions or, or bold statements. So you trying to go down a more question orientated intro now? No, no. Trying to make a, trying to make a more just, I've seen bold statements work well. Um, at, you know, okay. for, for the, you know, for the intros, not as much questions where, and same with titles, I, in my AB test project, I think I tested like three, four or five, um, like a question versus statement. And mm. the, the questions did, or the, sorry, the statements did better in the titles by about like 10%. Um, you know, the, the statement didn't do better in all of them, but overall, if you average them all together, uh, a bold statement did better than a question. Um, and I've been finding that that's probably the, it seems to be the same with intros because I've seen just a lot more of these really successful videos start with a bold statement rather than a question. Interesting. Do, I, I mean, just based on psychology, is that, do you think that's just because it's more of a definitive, almost like a yes or no, this is, it versus asking the question. I, th- I think so. I think that, I think you just sound more, um, you sound more authoritative when you make a bold statement. Mm, okay. So I might say like, uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to get bigger biceps versus like, Hey, are you struggling with not getting bigger biceps? Uh, it's like, yes, of course I am. Like, that's mm. why I'm watching this stupid video. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, can, can you help me? <laughs> Um, versus the yeah. bold statement, it's like, Hey, I'm going to help you. It's like, Oh, good. I know I'm here in the right spot. Um, you know, I know that you're going to help me with this, um, you know, with my big pay point. So I think it's really just a, a feeling of, of, all right, this person is going to help me with my pay point. I have confidence. They have confidence. Um, and I know they're going to be able to help me. So, and I believe them. Gotcha. At least I think. And what, what, <laughs> and what, what stats are you looking at or paying attention to in your YouTube to know that I guess you're on the right track and things are growing. Do you have arbitrary thresholds maybe of those stats as well that you are trying to, I know you mentioned your 80% retention for that 30 second intro, but is there anything else? Um, not really. I mean, so, so I'm just, I'm always trying to do better than last week or, you know, than my previous video, so there's that. I'm mostly looking at views just because uh, typically um, uh, my dog's over here licking himself. <laughs> uh, t- t- typically, um, like the the more views you get, the the worse your stats will be. Um, so like, you know, my okay. just because, you know, because YouTube is like, oh, wow, a lot of people like this. So they're just going to, you know, ha- give it like you know, a couple million impressions. And the, the CTR is going to tank, but like, you know, a 5% CTR on, you know, 10 million impressions 
is way better than a 10% CTR on uh, 1 million impressions. You know, even though you have half the CTR, you have twice the views. Um, yeah. Yeah, I did that right. Um, so yeah, I'm not. I'm uh, not going to try to calculate that in my head right now. <laughs> We're uh, going to assume so, you're right. That's the authoritative statement. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> yeah, and it's the same thing. Like you know, one of my videos is doing well right now, um, and my uh, you know my um, average view duration was doing very well, uh, but it's kind of taken off, um, and my average view duration is like tanking. Um, but every day it's getting more views. It's like, all right, cool. Well, like YouTube is showing this to a broader audience. People are clicking on it. They're liking it. You know, um, of course, like they're not going to like it as much as my core audience. Um, so, uh, but, um, you know, what actually matters is like views and like, you know, kind of, um, you know, all the other, uh, you know, like, uh, trying to get people to sign up for my email list and like selling my ebook. Uh, you know, that's what really matters. Not, not only views. So, um, so, you know, so that's, those are, those are the stats that I'm looking at. And so I'm looking at, you know, in the first 24 hours or so, you know, how is this doing compared to like my last few videos? Um, but then after that, um, I try, I try not to get obsessed with the stats, but, but I have been getting obsessed with the stats. Um, also, I also look at, um, end, end screen, the uh, click through rate. Um, mm, okay. I'm trying to be about 15% on there. Uh, I think I average like 12%, um, uh, so that's, that's just something that I'm working on. How do I, uh, you know, uh, to kind of tee up my next video, how do I choose that video? Right. So I've, I've gone and looked at like, you know, all of my videos and, you know, what videos had the highest, uh, end screen, uh, click through rate. And then, you know, what video were they sending them to? And then how do I, um, you know, how, how did I kind of tee that up? So, um, so that's another thing I've been looking at a lot. Um, really like int- intros and end screen click through rates for me personally. And I'm not like the best like YouTube strategist. There are a lot of people uh, much better than me, but that's what I've been, that's what I've been thinking about recently. Before I dive into the end screen stuff, you, obviously we talked about call to actions within the video before, and you just talked about now about getting people to opt into your email list or selling your digital product. Have you found a, maybe a non-invasive or a, or a way that's worked well for you to have the call to action there. Cause I think obviously people, there's a lot of ways people do it. People may cut to a completely separate video of them with the call to action. They might work it into whatever they're talking about at the time. Is there a way that you've found, is there a time within the video that maybe you've found like halfway through versus at the end or at the beginning? Yeah, I've been trying, <clears throat> I, I aim for about halfway. Uh, you know, okay. is like up to like from a third to two thirds, but about halfway is what I'm yeah. trying to do. Um, because obviously, like more people are going to drop off, drop off in the beginning. So you know, I don't want to kind of you know increase that drop off even more by asking them to do something that they don't want to do. Um, yeah. you know, also like yeah, you know, like maybe I could squeeze in like you know a few more downloads, but I would assume that YouTube, you know, even if I you know, increased my, um, you know, my, my, uh, view to like, you know, to, to download my lead magnet percentage. Like, even if I increase that by, um, you know, 50%, well, if I'm getting like, uh, you know, 10% of the views because I'm like, you know, asking for the, um, uh, you know, for them to download that right away and they're, everyone's like dropping and YouTube's like, yeah, I don't want to show this video because it has a really low average view duration. Um, you know, that's not worth it. So, um, and also just trying to think about like, all right, well, let me, be sure to like give enough value so that they want to hear, um, you know, more from me. Um, so yeah, I think about halfway and trying to just, so like my lead magnets are related to like puppies. So, and I try to follow it up with like, you know, if I make a point about puppies, then I'll be like, you know, speaking of, you know, I've got this for you, you know, check it out on link below. Um, trying to make it quick, but trying to make it valuable and very relevant to what I'm talking about right then and there. And then, and then moving on. Yeah, that's some good advice. And, and you mentioned about the end screens as well. Man, I can't wrap my head around how these YouTube channels plan the end screen because at the end of the video, they've got, hey, and, you know, go to this video because it, it just happens to be like the next step in the progression or whatever. But are you having to plan multiple videos ahead to be able to do that end screen well? Because you can't go back and edit it or go back and add an end screen or another clip to an end screen to a different video or whatever it is. Yeah, I mean, so far, what has worked for me is just thinking about, um, 
I, I only really have like kind of five videos that I send people to uh, on my end screens. Um, okay. Because those have like the highest end screen click through rate. Um, in, and I try to make them, you know, obviously I try to make them as relevant as I can. Uh, if I need to, I'll just kind of like, you know, I'll maybe I'll rewrite my, my outro, um, you know, to, to kind of like kind of make a bridge between like, here's this point, but you know, but you also might, you know, want to avoid this, um, and just kind of teeing up that next video. Um, but yeah, I mean, really just, you know, I kind of have like a little, uh, like a little bit of like an internal metric for, I know that, you know, this video gets a lot of clicks, um, when I mention it, uh, in the end screen. So I'm going to try to mention that, you know, as much as I can. Um, and, and I just have a handful that, that work well all the time. So, um, so yeah, so that's, that's what I'm, I'm just trying to, just trying to tee up that one of those five videos usually. Okay. Yeah. That makes it a little, a little easier and a little more simple to kind of manage because you're not trying to send someone to every video that you've ever created at some, at some point. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm really only thinking about, uh, I'm, you know, I'm not trying to send them to a, a billion different things. I'm hoping that YouTube will take care of that for me. Um, I'm hoping that, you know, if I can get someone to watch two videos, so they watch the first video and then they watch the second one, I'm hoping that YouTube, you know, next time they, uh, they log into YouTube. I'm hoping that my videos are all on their homepage. And I'm also hoping that as they're watching my videos, you know, they go to recommended and all of my videos are all my other videos are down there. So just, just really trying to think, you know, what, what's going to give me the best shot here? How do I kind of pull someone into two videos at least, and then just let YouTube take care of the rest. Hopefully they fall in love with my content and then even just like, you know, just click on my channel and just go, go binge my whole channel there. You know, that'd be mm. ideal. That's the dream there. Yes. <laughs> yes. YouTube would love that. I would love that. Uh, hopefully the audience would love it too. I mean, if they're binging my channel, then I assume they are. Uh, but yeah, yeah, that, that is the dream. Perfect. Now this has been a really insightful episode, Jake. I've taken a ton away from it. I'm hoping anyone who's looking to get into video for 2023, uh, take a lot away from this too. I think now with the current I guess, obsession and rise of the new chat uh, GPT and the AI content that people are freaking out about. Um, that might be going more towards adding video just for authenticity and for branding and things like that to be able to produce content that's not just easily regurgitated, essentially. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. And I mean, and also just it's a good way to diversify, um, you know, your mm -hmm. income and your, your traffic. So... <laughs> Uh, so it's been, it's been good for me. Uh, that's awesome. If anyone wants to find you, follow you, see what you're up to, Jake, where can they do that? Um, first and foremost, creatorhooks.com. Um, that's where the newsletter is. It's free. It goes out uh, every Monday morning. And also you can read past newsletter editions there. And then uh, at on Twitter, um, at J Thomas underscore underscore. Um, and uh, I, I know like my like terrible uh twitter seo <laughs> i didn't think that uh when i started i was like yeah whatever it's just twitter i don't care but now it's like my the oh my only yeah. social media channel you can also search jake thomas if you see a guy with a beard and a hat and a golden retriever you will know that that's me um so uh my my, my re recently uh now i pop up now so just go just search jake thomas on twitter <laughs> <laughs> perfect and we'll make sure we link all those up in the description too but thanks for coming on jake and sharing uh, everything to do with youtube i really appreciate it yeah thanks for having me james thanks for tuning in and i hope you enjoyed the show don't forget to like and subscribe wherever you're listening until the next episode goodbye